In the early 1970s, the United States faced an unprecedented challenge in the form of a new Soviet aircraft, the MiG-25. This supersonic interceptor, which could fly at speeds exceeding Mach 3 and reach altitudes of over 80,000 feet, left Western military planners in a state of deep concern. The MiG-25 was designed to counter a specific threat, the B-70 Valkyrie, a high-speed American bomber that would have been capable of delivering nuclear strikes far beyond Soviet air defenses. However, the MiG-25's sudden and mysterious appearance caught the West by surprise, and the questions surrounding its capabilities would fuel tensions for years. In the 1950s, the U.S. military had embarked on the development of its first true intercontinental bomber, capable of outrunning and outmaneuvering any air defense system. The XB-70 Valkyrie was the pinnacle of American bomber design. It was faster, higher flying, and more advanced than anything the Soviet Union could produce. In response, the Soviets began developing their own interceptor, the MiG-25. Engineers faced numerous challenges in creating a jet that could catch a bomber like the XB-70. They opted to use large, powerful engines from cruise missiles, creating a plane capable of extremely high speeds, but one that was not designed for agility or long-term use. Mass production of the MiG-25 began in the late 1960s, with the Soviet Union cranking out dozens of these jets each month. Despite its speed, however, it was not the agile, versatile fighter that the West initially feared. Instead, it was a powerful interceptor with one goal, to catch and destroy high-altitude bombers like the B-70. This massive, brute-force aircraft was engineered for straight-line speed, sacrificing maneuverability for raw power. In 1971, Israeli radar operators first spotted MiG-25s flying over the Sinai Peninsula at mind-boggling speeds, clocking the jets at over Mach 2.5, and in some cases, even Mach 3. It became apparent to Western intelligence that this was a threat unlike any other, but they still didn't know much about the aircraft's true capabilities. Then, in 1976, the world was stunned when Viktor Belenko, a Soviet pilot, defected to the West, bringing a MiG-25 with him. Landing in Japan, Belenko's aircraft became a valuable treasure trove of information for U.S. intelligence. As military experts studied the MiG-25 up close, they quickly discovered that much of the jet's impressive performance was based on raw power and brute force, rather than cutting-edge technology. Its engines, though capable of reaching extraordinary speeds, couldn't sustain them for long without catastrophic damage. The radar, though powerful, couldn't track low-flying targets, and the airframe, while designed for speed, was far too heavy for combat maneuvering. The MiG-25's role as a high-speed interceptor was evident, but the aircraft was less effective against the types of low-altitude, radar-evading bombers that the United States had since shifted its focus to. In a dramatic twist, the MiG-25, once feared as a game-changer in the Cold War, was quickly seen as a flawed, though still impressive, aircraft that couldn't match the evolving nature of modern warfare. The American military had learned everything they needed to know about the MiG-25, rendering its once imposing secrecy useless. Despite its weaknesses, the MiG-25 would go on to set numerous world records and serve in several countries. However, it was soon overshadowed by the development of the MiG-31, a more advanced interceptor that would become one of the most capable aircraft in history. Built with the lessons learned from the MiG-25's successes and failures, by the late 1970s, the Soviet Union had already begun working on the next generation of aircraft, leaving the MiG-25 as a relic of a past era an aircraft that had caused much fear but ultimately failed to live up to its initial reputation. Yet, despite being outclassed by newer designs, the MiG-25's legacy remained intact, cementing its place as one of the fastest and most powerful jets ever built.